chair here. One chair here. There's one chair here, one chair here. All right. Live? Live. Uh, Malana, you want to make introduction? Make introduction. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah for, for coming on such short notice. Alhamdulillah, we have uh, Dr. Hani. Dr. Hani is the, the founder of Islamic Relief. He's been with Islamic Relief for about 25 years. He's retired for the past 15 years. Islamic Relief turns 40 next year. Inshallah, uh, we invited you guys so he can share, share with us some of his vision. No, when he started the organization, what was the purpose? So we all know what, what are we doing also, inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Ustaz Salam Rasulullah Zakaria, sit down. Anybody else coming with you? Sister Kudus. More volunteers, Bismillah, mashallah. Sit down, sit down. One, two, sisters, come this way. Yeah, I like Ah. All right. Uh, thank you, young men and young women, for coming here today to let me be inspired by all of you. That's right? Yes? You're inspiring me. And uh, this is a very, very momental time for me because you will bring me back. 40 years ago, when we were surrounded by young people like you, a younger people like most of you, who started this journey with no resources, with no vision, with just a warm heart that wanted to help the people. Our main slogan or logo was help, help, help. Nothing else. As young people, male and female, at that time, was doing more than saying one word. Help. 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 This was the focus of our work. Which led young people like you to build this organization from scratch. Don't ever undermine what you have. You have more than you think. And you can do more than you believe that you can achieve. If you believe in yourself, if we believe in our community, if we believe in our religion and the teaching of our Prophet, we have a lot. We have a lot to offer. And we should not be sitting back doing nothing. Sitting back being crying for the people or feeling pity for the people who are homeless, or became refugees, or our sisters who have been raped or يعني, attacked, or our children who become orphans, or our other sisters who became widows. No. In our work, should not feel pity. We should change this feeling into a positive energy. A positive energy makes you to try with the energy to change the community to help, to teach, to educate, to direct, to support, and to save. This is the positive energy of feeling pity for others. Crying by itself is good because it's a feeling, but not good enough. It's not good enough. Stop crying and keep acting. Especially at your age, when you are at the university. You have less responsibility because you are not married yet. No children, no husband to give you a headache. Or no wife to make you mad. 
Is that right? Both of them make you mad. The husband makes you mad and the wife make you insane. The same? Uh, so this is the age for you to learn. And in my journey, I developed something which I mentioned it yesterday. Or before, when I was in Ireland about uh, nearly a year ago. Your first stage of your life, sister, what's your name? Sayyidah Zainab, the great-granddaughter of the Prophet Wasallam. Thank you. You look like him. <laughs> All right? Donkey. You know donkey? He's a very hard-working creature of Allah. Now it's the time for each and every one of us to work like a donkey. In gaining experience, gaining knowledge, educated, observing, before I start to jump and make opinion. From the age of 15, at least for 15 to 20 years and more, I have to work like a donkey. When I was young, like you are younger than you, in second school, we used to study every day, 10 hours and more. At the time of the exam, the 10 hours goes to 11, 12, 15 hours to go to the medical school. Maybe nowadays it's different, but at least you have to work hard. To listen to the people, to learn from them. You might have the brilliant idea, the smartest brain, but have no experience. With lack of experience, you might fail. And when you fail, because you jumped high, you might break your neck. You might not be able to stand up again. But once you have the, 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 the intelligence, the intellect, you'll be able to teach yourself how to compose yourself and keep listening. Listening to anybody. Not only to scholars and teachers and the da'i, but even to the cleaner. Even to the cleaner, even to the porter, even security guard, even to the taxi driver, even to the old man in the street that you don't know him. Because he has knowledge which you don't have. Each human being, each human being has different experience to us. Or two hours. That's why we have during this period from the, the age of 15 to the age of 40 to work like a donkey. When we're with the job and we want to get more experience, instead of working for seven, eight hours a day, to ask our boss to give us more task, to learn more. Because we want to be elevated, promoted. And this is the first step in our life. To keep working like a donkey before coming out to guide other people. Okay? And take advice from anyone and everyone. Listen to everyone and anyone that you know. And sometimes the people who are not Muslims can give you a better than advice than others. You don't know. There is a proverb in Arabic, seek knowledge even from China, it's not a hadith. Seek knowledge even if you travel to China. Okay? As far as that, young people like you and you and you and you, used to walk it. Walk it. From Spain or Portugal at the time of Andalusia to Iraq, on leg, on foot. To seek knowledge from Alim. Seeking knowledge is a very painful process. But once you got the knowledge, you will be the teacher. But you cannot be the teacher overnight. It's a process of learning, listening, understanding, comprehending, composing, and delivering your opinion. All these great scholars do not give opinion because just they have been born scholars. No. They went through all this. Huh? Processes. As I mentioned, the two ladies yesterday, two Fatima, 
لفاطمة بنت ابنة الإمام مالك عند فاطمة ابنة سعيد بن المسيب. And both of them were teachers. Both of them were teachers at the young age. Not an old age. And then even the daughter of, of Sayyid bin Sayyid, when she married her husband, you know, have you been there to the wedding? No. <laughs> so that's for 1400 years ago. Anyway, he went to see her, uh, to attend the circle of her father. You know what she told them? Where are you going? Where are you going? He said, I'm going to your father's class. She said, why? He said, to learn from him. He said, sit down here. Said, sit down. I am going to teach you what my father is telling you in the mosque. When you educate a woman, you educate the whole nation. Not like nowadays. They call you names because you are wearing hijab or you are wearing beards or, or, or. No. Knowledge is the difference. Between ignorance and civilization. Between backwardness and advancement. Without knowledge, we are stupidly ignorant individuals. We deserve to be at the tail end of, of other nations. Most of the discoveries on earth and science and technology are made by us, by great grandfathers of us. But what have we done so far, Mr. What's your name? Mikhail, the angels, and you, my daughter, because my daughter's name is Fatma Zahra, and you, huh? Ahmed. Ahmed Muhammad Mahmoud, and you, Abdullah, Abdullah. and you, Abdullah. and you, Azan, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Brother, 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 I am Allah's salah. We call you brother, I am Allah's salah. Sister Zainab and sister Rashida, Bismillah, MashaAllah. Huh? Dalia. Dalia. Sheikh Saad. Saad Talib? Oh, very good. My friend of mine. I'm my teacher. Alhamdulillah. Your father? Yeah. Your father? Yeah, yeah. Uncle? And you, Ruxana. this is not Arabic, but Ruxana is a very good name. Tasneem. <laughs> ah, Bismillah, Mashallah. Tasneem is a good name, Shkada. It's, it's a the spring the water. The uh, spring water in heaven. And you, Sister President. <laughs> and you, Mishkat or Misbah, Surat Nur. They say she wants to go to Mishkat Musbah. <laughs> it's not your name. It's her mother told her that. Okay. Huh? 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 All right. Each one of us should stand for his name. Because you should have a share of your name. Muhammad comes from Hamd. Fatima Zahra comes from the character of the Hazrat Fatima, daughter of Ali, the daughter of uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the, the wife of Ali. And Zainab is a great granddaughter of the Prophet. And you are? Rashida. Rashida, the wise. The wise one. The wise one. The wise one. And what are you? You, huh? Are you are the angels bringing all the winds and the rain with you. Is that right? Very good. So we have to stand for our names. But to conclude, because I want to listen to some of your questions, to conclude is we have to have a role in our life. A role that we can play, a role that we can lead, and a role that we can be followed when we are actually leading such a role. You become leader. You become leader. You become leader, whether you are a man or a woman. You become leaders. All right. First question from Sister Zainab or Sister Rashida or Fatima Zahra. 
או רעיסה, או תסנים, או תסנים, או מקעיל. First question. If you are, if we are living in the, in, in the era of Islamophobia, and the rule is made to us by others, if we believe that the battle is going to be lost, we have to prepare ourselves for the second battle by investing in people like yourself. I am maybe over 70 now. You are in the 20s. So for me, or for people like me, I have to pass the stick of the relay team to you to take the lead while I'm here, while they are here. This is what we need to do. You know what, sister? From every corner of the globe, there is a moving individuals from Muslim background. Try to find a solution for the Ummah, but they're not coming together yet. Sooner, maybe in our generation, or in your generation, or generation after you, will become to a focal point. To have a proper or solid people like you. And from amongst you, the leaders will come. Changing the history, building community, building civilization, is not done overnight. It takes tens of years. You might lose today a stage in the battle of reconstructing life on earth. But second generation and third generation can build it. And what we see nowadays in confidence, motivated, optimistic, that it is happening. Like actually this kind of moving the, 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 the sand underneath your feet to build a mountain at the end of the road. It's happening. You have to believe it's happening because it's happening, but it will take time. When Allah created all the creation, it took millions of years. He can do, he could have done it like this. But he gave us this gradualism to understand that maturity and development does not happen overnight. Doesn't happen overnight. You born on the 1st of March, 1990, will your parent put you in the school on the 2nd of March, 1990? Will your parent put you in school at the age, of, and, and the university at the age of five years? University? All right? Because development is the key. If you go to the desert and you want to change into a green land, you have to invest. You have to plant the vegetation first, you have to bring water. You have, you have, you have to tell you make the desert green. And this might take 50 years. So at the moment, keep learning, keep observing, keep connecting, keep communicating, and keep building. Building a movement or a journey that you might not see its end. Somebody else will do. Somebody else will see it. Okay? Okay? So we need the Nur of Deans. Hmm? We need the Nur of Deans of the Ummah to create the Salah of Deans. And each one of us have a role to play. You don't have to become the leader, the in command, but you become one of the people who shared in creating this journey. The journey that everybody else will come and walk through it and follow you. Many Sahaba are not known. Many Tabi'in are not known. Many Anbiya are not known. Is that right? Do we know all the names of the Prophets? No. 
But they came. They delivered their message and they died. Some of them we know. A few of them we know. But most of them we don't know. But they are a part of this long journey. All right. Anybody else to ask questions? Yes. Uh, in your journey with Islamic Relief, <clears throat> what has been your biggest challenge? The biggest challenge from inside or from outside? From inside was to find the right people actually to do the job. Because all the youngsters were actually trying to find the job in a better company or a better department in the, in the government or a factory or whatever it is. This internally. To find the right people. Externally is the attack against Islam, which is a never-ending story. It didn't stop up till now. In the good old days, it's called Islamization. Now it's called radicalization, Islamophobia. They will not leave you alone at all. So what you need to do to deliver a product that they need to force your enemy to use your product. And instead of responding to them in hot-headedness, the action, say, Thank you, I have no time for you. Because you are experimenting your experiment. You are trying your trial. You are writing your book. You are making your research. You are building your blocks, the roadmap. Because if you are distracted by them, and they want you to be distracted, you will never finish what you want to do. Don't let them to distract you from achieving what Allah wants you to achieve. From achieving what the poor people want you to achieve. Because the poor people would like to listen to what you say, to find your solution, to enjoy the project you are developing for them. Developing for them. Don't let them to let you lose focus on your objective. Okay? Fatima Tazara. You know my Fatima Tazara, where is she? You know where is she? Okay, that's right. Yes, anybody else? Sisters and brothers? <laughs> Don't be shy to ask. Yes, sister. Um, how are you so positive and... How are you? How are you so positive and how do you keep the negative bad energy like i'm sure you have bad people against you and have good people against you how do you balance that while working in humanitarian aid to, to be very honest if i tell you i'm all the time safe not being upset i become a liar like anyone was being backstabbed or somebody called him names or somebody pulled him from the back of course i'd be upset but how can you contain your anger you learn by the time, as I was saying two days ago, when I was in uh, Cape Town, I was trying to record the first recording live stream on uh, YouTube. And they gave it to the cameraman. And the cameraman recorded everything. When we were trying to look for, for the video, couldn't be able to find it. I thought we were lost, and he was shocked. I told him, cool down. 30 years ago, if you did this to me, I was a different man. I was a very bad man. Very silly, sticky, stupid, arrogant, shouting. But nowadays I learned, shouting does not get you anywhere. Does not get you anywhere. I cooled my head. And I asked one of my assistants in Turkey, can you find, they said this one of the unlisted videos. Uh, you are sitting with a girl, to an influencer from America. But this is the one. He recorded it, but did not know how to list it. If I was 30 years ago, <coughs> Alhamdulillah, they have not met me 30 years ago. You could have seen somebody else. But we keep learning from our mistakes. Keep learning. I keep listening to advice of others. 
But as the Prophet Sallallahu said, the, the strong man is not the man who has the muscles. Now the man or the woman who can overpower you. But it's the man or the woman who can contain her anger. Control her anger. Or his anger. This is what we learn through the journey. Yes, brothers and sisters. I am she? Uh, I have to go. Last question. I will say one, two, three. Yes, that's the question. <laughs> when you send me a ticket, because I don't have money for the ticket. Last question. What's your message to us? My message to us, don't be put off of failing. I failed many times. I failed my exam. I failed my driving test. I failed my proposition to young girls. I was told off in spite of the fact I was very handsome. <laughs> Who's here? <laughs> I failed my degree, the thesis, but I have to come back to get it. So I, I married the, the best woman. I got my driving test. I passed my degree and I got a doctor of medicine and got my license to work in UK as a medical doctor. But I never got it from the first time. I always fail. I always fail. I'm the falling failure individual, or fa falling failing individual. Okay, Morana? Anything else? Because actually the two engines are here. I want to leave. Give them my, uh, uh, give them my number. In case if they want to... This is a gift on behalf of the volunteers of Durban. Is it money? <laughs> <laughs> if it's not money, keep it. I would it. have taken it. <laughs> if it's not money, take it. I want money. I want money. <laughs> All right. Yalla, bismillah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, sister.